In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come to the altar of God here at church, to the altar of our hearts at home, we acknowledge our sins, our need of God's grace and mercy in our lives. We turn our attentions back to the Lord now, and we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Nehemiah. Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the scribe, stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is his excellency, 
And Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich food, and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not, for this reason, belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it does not, for this reason, belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surround with greater honor. And our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety, whereas our more presentable parts do not need this. But God has so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now you are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. 
Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who are eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read, and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Whenever we gather for Sunday Mass, we hear three scripture readings. We hear the Old Testament reading, the New Testament reading, and the Gospel reading. And that's in addition to the Psalm. And this has been the pattern ever since the Second Vatican Council in the late 1960s. Old Testament, New Testament, Gospel. Before the Council, however, there was only a New Testament reading and and a Gospel reading. Uh, Now, statistics and numbers are kind of dry, but these are are interesting. Before Vatican II, about 1%, about 1% of the Old Testament was heard during Mass. After Vatican II, that increased to about 14%. Uh, with the New Testament. Before Vatican II, about 17% was heard during Mass. And that increased to about 72% after Vatican II. These are some pretty big increases. Uh, Scripture has always had a a place in Catholic worship, but since the Second Vatican Council, it's had an even more prominent place in our celebration of the Mass. And the question is, why? Today, the third Sunday of Ordinary Time, was designated by Pope Francis in 2019 as Sunday of the Word of God. And so today seems like a good day to look into this question. Why do we hear a lot more of scripture during Mass than our grandparents or great-grandparents did when they went to Mass? Why so many more of scripture passages? And the answer seems to be an increased awareness or appreciation of the important role that scripture plays in our salvation. Jesus is our ticket to heaven. He is our salvation. But Jesus is also the word made flesh. 
Uh, and this is important to always remember. Even before that first Christmas Eve, when Jesus was born, he existed as the Word of God. That's important to remember. He is the Word of God come in the flesh. We Catholics love and adore the Word in the flesh. Uh, it's why we hold sacraments as so critically important. We can literally taste the Lord in the flesh. We can feel his cleansing bath of rebirth and baptism. We can smell his perfumed presence in holy oil. The word comes to us physically in the flesh. But the word is also made known to us through the written word, through the spoken word. Uh, scripture itself is not the word made flesh. The Eucharist and all the sacraments is the word made flesh. Instead, scripture is the word revealed. The word revealed. As people head along the way of salvation, we want to know Jesus both in the flesh and as he's written of and spoken of. We need both the liturgy of the Eucharist and the liturgy of the word. This is a reason perhaps why since the Second Vatican Council we are made to hear a lot more scripture when we come to Mass. Now from our readings today, we see at least three distinct values scripture has for us as we go along the way of salvation. The first value is that scripture focuses, uh, humbles, and guides us. It focuses, humbles, and guides us. From the book of Nehemiah today, we heard about Ezra reading aloud from the book of the law of God. Now, this was happening just a few years after uh, the Israelites had been freed from their captivity in Babylon. They'd gone back to Jerusalem after 50 years in exile. But, as it turned out, they needed a lot of help getting back on their feet as the people of God. The proclamation of Scripture brought the Israelites back to their roots. It helped restore their communal identity, and it gave a clear, uh, clear guidance on how to order their lives again around God and around the worship of God. And we can see this today for ourselves. You know, whenever we get off track in our lives, uh, what do we use to write ourselves? Well, we remember, or we should remember, sacred scripture. The Ten Commandments, the two great commandments of Jesus, the Beatitudes, uh, the teachings of the apostles, and so on. We can do this communally, of course, but we also do this individually. You know, uh, in uh, a few weeks here, we're going to be uh, into Lent again. And what do we oftentimes do during Lent? Well, we turn back to these basic commands uh, and teachings of the Word, which are revealed through Scripture. Scripture focuses, it humbles, and it guides us toward God. A second value of Scripture comes from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Scripture helps us to be in right relationship with one another. When St. Paul talks about the many parts of the one body, and how each part is necessary, and how one part shouldn't try to be a different part. He's essentially saying, accept your place in Christ's mission, and accept others' roles in that same mission, not only accept it, but be mutually supportive in the spirit of the one Lord. So scripture tells us, or leads us along the path of right relationship with one another. And the third value of scripture uh, comes from what we see Jesus doing in the synagogue. Scripture helps us to have vision, helps us to have vision and to look forward with anticipation, to be people of living and true faith as we go forward along the way of salvation. In the first century, Jews would gather in the synagogues and they'd hear some reading from the book of the law of God, which is what we saw uh, Ezra doing in the first reading. And then they would hear a second reading from one of the prophets. Uh, in the gospel today, we see Jesus uh, doing that second reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. And what's important here is that that second re reading revealed how some law or promise of God from the first reading had been fulfilled or was being fulfilled. And the purpose of this was to keep people in a spirit of looking forward, to keep them in a spirit of anticipation and, and watchfulness uh, for what God might be doing. And together, these paired readings from the law and the prophets gave people hope. When Jesus said that he came to fulfill the law and the prophets, he meant to say, in, in essence, I am your hope. Look to me for your salvation. 
He took these two readings from the synagogue and he went beyond them. Today, we hear from the New Testament during Mass. We hear in the Gospel and in the Old Testament the promises of God. And then we see those promises uh, being fulfilled throughout the New Testament. And this fulfillment we see within the progression of Scripture gives us hope, even today. Since the Second Vatican Council, we hear a fuller selection of sacred Scripture with the intent that it might increase our hope in God, our hope and our trust that the Holy Spirit is among us and at work among us. And so Scripture leads us right to the Eucharist, where, of course, our hope of God's actual uh, presence, love and mercy, is realized. So sacred scripture has at least, at least three values for us as we go along the way of salvation. It focuses, humbles, and guides us in our attempts to love and to worship God. It helps us to be in right relationship with one another as friends in Christ. And it inspires us to be hopeful, to always look forward, looking to see what is God doing today, right now. God is very much alive and at work still today. Scripture helps us to see that. And so does the unfolded life of the church. If we pay attention to Jesus, the word made flesh in the sacraments, and the word revealed in sacred scripture, if we pay attention to Jesus, we can't be anything but a people of anticipation and a people of real hope. Once again, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us pray. For the church, her leaders, and all the faithful, that through baptism and with faith in God's word, we may be effective instruments of hope and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For local, state, and national leaders, that the word of God may touch their hearts and minds and that they might respond. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are homebound, those in hospitals and nursing homes, the elderly and the infirm, that Christ would bring peace and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. For those whose journeys of faith are leading them along unfamiliar paths, that they place their hope in the Lord, who is trustworthy, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers written in our parish books of prayer, and for the prayers we offer to the Lord from the altar of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of St. Clair Parish, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all those who have fallen asleep in Christ, may they rejoice to see the fulfillment of the Lord's promises in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. And we call upon the intercession of St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. 
God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you with these prayers spoken, all the prayers in our hearts. We ask you to receive them and also the prayers of all the saints made on our behalf through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants who worship from their homes and all who gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, 
Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased. for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer you to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The Mass is ended.